things. Um, so we talk about Batten disease, um, which is a confusing term. It's a term that I'm using. It, it's a term that actually can apply to multiple diseases. So Batten disease both means all of the neuronal steroid lipofusinoses. Um, it also specifically means the juvenile form or CLN3. Uh, form of Batten disease, and in that form of Batten disease, the CLN3 form, uh, our group has developed a, a rating scale, the Unified Batten Disease Rating Scale, that really does take a comprehensive uh, evaluation of the salient features of the disease, physical symptoms, uh, seizure frequency and severity, capability or function, along with cognition and mood kinds of symptoms, which really are at the heart um, of the main types of symptoms that are there, and that's been the backbone of a long-standing natural history program. Um, and so for CLN3 disease, that's sort of our state, state of the art, so to speak, in terms of clinical rating scales. That differs for other kinds of NCL. So in CLN2 disease, um, the Hamburg Blade Infantile Rating Scale is one that um, was developed at a group in Hamburg, Germany, um, and also does a really great job at, at getting to the core of the key and salient features of the disease and being able to quantify and track that over time. And for other forms of NCL, uh, we're sort of taking a look now at thinking about those those two different models of rating scales and trying to see how they can be modified and adapted to apply very well for other forms of Batten disease. I think we think about this group of distinct genetic disorders, but they really at their core have some very similar and overlapping features of vision loss, epilepsy, movement disorder, cognition, um, and uh, cognitive dysfunction and mood and behavior symptoms. So there's a sense that if we can think about some of the tools that we might use for one, it may be easy to adapt of how we might think about using those same kinds of tools for other forms as well. Um, and I think that's really where we are, trying to, again, think ahead um, for other forms of NCLs that hopefully will have uh, compounds to test on the horizon very soon and new therapies or treatments in the pipeline. How do we prepare for that, both in thinking about measurements and endpoints and thinking about developing the data needed to move forward?